What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here and today we are going over a game versus Grandmaster Mac Moner. Me versus Mac Moner, Grandmaster in the 2020 States Cup. Let's get right into it guys. Here it is. Now we have a Scotch Gambino here which is the Scotch Gambit. So um, shout out to all you Scotch Gambit players out there. I see you. Shout out to you. So uh, we have a Scotch Gambit um, playlist here where it will be attached to this video as well. So this was the 2020 States Cup, guys. I do have access right here. It's cut off, but you can, I'm, I'm going to leave the link for you guys to click on so you can check it out. But this is the States Cup, and it's going on literally right now. So this was last week's. Uh, this week we played um, New York. We beat New York this week. But last week we played uh, New Jersey. So... Uh, we played Grandmaster Mac Moner. He was actually for his board. So you got a chance to play him. Here's the game. Scotch Gambino, E4, E5, Knight of 3, Knight C6, and D4. Now we're right into the realm of the Scotch Gambit. We call it the Scotch Gambino here at the channel. Big fans of it. E takes D4, Bishop C4. Uh, uh, this is just theory, regular stuff. Knight of 6 and an E5, which now I'm expecting to see D5 is the strongest usually. But they have these other alternative moves that sometimes give white problems if you don't know what you're doing. But, of course, we're Jedi here. So after Knight E4, Queen E2. Now Nakamura had this position, uh, I think, twice in the database. If you look it up, many, many players have had this position, but um, notable that I was like, oh, man, oh, snap. Like, you know, Hikaru played this. So Hikaru, Hikaru had a, he played this twice. Hikaru had played, I think, Topolov in one and maybe Morozovic in another one, somebody else. But he won both games. But uh, looking at this, it's like uh, in this particular position, Queen E2 is the best move. Attacking the knight. D5 fails on the spot because I just hop a sign. Of course, he's a GM. He knows that. So knight to C5 is the best move here. And after knight to C5, I play C3, which is a usual move played here um, in this kind of position here. The C3 move is actually pretty cool, guys. It's pretty cool. And what it's saying is right now I'm down a pawn, but I'm going to give you another pawn for rapid development. And if you do end up capturing here, you have this position where white's going to usually go like bishop E3. Excuse me. Bishop F4 or bishop G5. And casting castling queenside, putting a rook on d1, playing h4, bishop d3, and like just going to town on this man. Okay, so that's usually and that's actually what happened in the game too. If you look up to Nakamura game when he played this position, but um, c3 uh, after d3 uh, is the is the clever move that they usually make because if I take the bishop, if I take with the bishop, he's just going to take my bishop, and that's the bishop I really wanted to use. So we play queen e3 actually instead, uh, threatening b4. And then after we play b4, then we're going to take on d3 and keep the bishop aimed on this side of the board. So bishop d7's on the board, and then castles and castles. Very simple here, getting out of the way. And then again, we follow up with the plan, b4, taking on d3. And the knight e6, and bishop takes d3. And black is doing okay, but he still needs to be very accurate here. d6 is usually the move here. And as white, if you're going to play the Scotch Gambino, you need to know that, of course, number one, to take is a mistake. So not all the time should you be capturing just because it's there. And if we do capture, it's just going to be nice for black. Like, his bishops don't have any problems anymore. This rook's going to come to the file. It's just, it looks are very deceiving here for white. So, um, you want to keep the tension. And if he captures, I want him to get in trouble for it. So, I play rook to d1. So, rook to d1. So, if he captures, we are going to run into bishop takes h7 kind of thing here with, like, this right here. D takes, takes, takes. And you'll have this kind of position right here. So he has some compensation, and he's a GM. But, of course, he has a compensation. But uh, I think we should objectively just win this game here. So after uh, Rook to D1, he plays um, Bishop D7. And now what would you play in this position, guys? Like, pause the video. What would you actually do here? After Bishop D7, Bishop to C2. Is what I played actually. You got a lot of other moves, and this one's interesting. Reason why I chose bishop to c2 is because I wanted to keep the pressure on this file here. I just wanted to do it and also keep the long range sniper here ready to go at any moment. He played rook to e8, which was very good. I thought it actually oh, just x rays the queen, just like how, how I'm x raying his. And uh, he, he can also maybe play bishop f8 or knight to f8. And stay tuned, right? So knight a3 is what I chose here. But when I looked at this in the engine after I played this game, the best move is actually going for this line, knight b to d2, and then knight takes c5, but and, and we'll, we'll fast forward here. This is how it looks. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this position. Sometimes it's okay to say no to the engine, guys. Like, if you don't like what they like or like what they suggest, just say no. Now, 
<laughs> Take that with a grain of salt, of course, because I'm I don't like what the engine plays. I'm gonna just play what I want, and then you lose. But at the same time, uh, you don't have to always take all of their suggestions here. Knight a3 was my choice. I actually just wanted to keep the rook file open, and also put the bishop on b2 eventually, but also have like knight c4 to be able, to be available for me. Uh, but yeah, so I learned from this game too, though I learned a lot from it. But after knight of eight. He takes d6 and actually let's go back here after knight of fate guys when you when you can get a knight here on the f file or uh, on f1 or f8 man that knight i mean not that it's passive number one it is passive but man the defense how active it is on the defense is man that's the softest square and you can't do anything about it like there's nothing you can do there so it kind of i sat here for a while and these games are 15 minute two second increment so i'm sitting here and i'm like man what do i even do here like what do i do and I looked around the board, and here's the move I found, guys. Here it is. E takes d6. I actually captured and allowed him to get here. I allow him to actually just x-ray me. Why? Or actually, like, you know, take the pawn with tempo. The reason being is because if I'm going to go into a position, like if I have nothing else to do, or uh, my attack is not what I wanted it to be anymore, or I just can't attack like how I want it to, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to be okay with a position that I am slightly better in or I'm active in. So I'm looking for activity now. So now after e takes d6, bishop takes and I play queen g5 because it's active. It makes him, it forces him to do something. And after captures, knight takes. So now this knight can swing here. I still have the file. Knight c4 is coming and he's still trying to develop completely, which I am too with this bishop and maybe this knight. But I mean, white's doing fine. White light looks pretty good here. Feels good, even knight b5 being a threat or knight to c4, and here's what he played, bishop e5. So he put a threat on the board. The more threats, the better, guys. The more threats, the better. <clears throat> and then I went bishop to b2. Now here, actually, guys, this was like a blunder in a way. Bishop b2, and we were in time trouble, I do remember that, but the engine wanted bishop to d2. And I'm just not a big fan of this move at all, because I just didn't, like, he just centralizes the rook for free, like... What did I get out of this now? And it's just, a, I, this didn't feel right. I just didn't like it, right? And actually, I think, you know, it's not about, I, tell, I used to tell my students this a lot. It's not about what you want to play. It's what you kind of have to play. Not all the time, but a lot of times, that's usually how it goes. So bishop to b2, I, I didn't want to, uh, I, I didn't want to play bishop d2, so I chose bishop b2. And it actually hurt me, because after h6, my knight has to go somewhere. I went to my square that I wanted to go to, and swing around to c5, but then, bam, I was like, whoa, it's one of those, like, oh, snap, you know, you ever got hit or just smacked? Or just like, you know, some caught you off guard and you just slipped. You didn't even know that that was there. And that's exactly what happened here. And I takes B4. I was like, oh, snap. I just hung a pawn. We both in time tremble at this point, though. I am up about a minute or something like that. But, um, yeah, he was in time trouble. And I, and I was like, whoa, where did this even, how did that even get on the board? You know, kind of thing. So I was like, but here's the thing, guys. When you're down a pawn, even at the greatest, the, the greatest level, the elites, the grandmasters, right? Think about this. Being down a pawn, now that can dictate a game a lot of times at the top level, but that does not say that the game is over. The game is about checkmate. So yeah, I'm down a pawn, but I'm fighting and I have I have counterplay and my pieces can get active very quickly. And it's not over yet. You still have to prove the end game. So after knight takes b4, I play bishop to b3. He went knight to a6 and he moved that knight right back to a6 because I was going knight c5. That's why he went knight a6 instead of knight to c6. I, and then I played uh, f3 at this point because loose pieces lose games and this knight would have been hanging after bishop takes h2. And again, like that loose pieces lose games. That's why he was able to snap, uh, like, you know, grab this pawn right here because b2 is hanging. And after b5, rook a to b1, I put my rook on the file here to defend my bishop. He does the same, but he's not defending. He's just like trying to push b4 as quickly as possible. I bring my knight from the rim over to the center, knight to c2, so I can play knight to d4. He goes bishop e6, and again, to take is a mistake. Why would I take this? There's no reason to take this and get his knight off the back rank. So I'm with knight to d4. And if he captures, then I'll take with the rook. And if he takes this way, I can take with the pawn. Let's see what happened. He actually took on d4. Taking with the pawn would isolate it, and it would also isolate these. So I would have two sets of isolated pawns. That's just not good, right? So after takes, I take with the rook just in case he captures, like he did. And now my pawns get connected. And I have the A file to work with where this knight is very vulnerable, very, very short on squares. 
Then you play knight to e6, that's a tempo, getting off the back rank, attacking my rook at the same time. Now you want to play active, guys. I can move my rook back if I want to, like rook d2, rook d1. I can even go rook d7. Seems right, right? But here's the thing, guys. You want to make threats or prevent them. And here I play rook to d5 to prevent his c5 knight to swinging in there. I thought that he would play c6, and that's exactly what he did. And then what do you think I did? Rook to d6. Keep the threats going. Then he moved the knight to c5 anyway because we are in time trouble at this point. I think he might have been at a minute or less. Right at a minute or less here. We're playing 15 minutes with two second increment. Every time you move, you get an extra two seconds. So knight takes, knight takes, bishop a3. I'm hitting the knight now while also attacking the pawn. Knight e6. And there we go. I got my pawn back. And I'm up on time, feeling like a big dog would because a big dog could. Rook takes c6 and then rook e to c8. And then he's trying to trade him off. Now in this position, the engine actually evaluated black as slightly better by not even a pawn. Basically like half a pawn. We can turn it on right here. I'll show you. Maybe it's not this position. I think it's another position. But oh, this one's equal. So I was supposed to play bishop before, but that's not like human-like. Rook c1 is more human-like. And rook c1 is the best move. And that's what the engine says. That, oh, it's like almost half a pawn, right? So, uh, but at the same time, guys, like... I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm feeling better here after, like, being down a pawn, right? But here's what happened. I play rook to c1, and then after I play rook c1, um, you know, uh, Grandmaster Mac Molnar found the tallest building he could find. He walked inside of it, and he took the stairs all the way up to the top floor. And once he did that, he jumped off of the building and played knight to d4. It is not a move. It doesn't work. It is hanging. It's not a move, bro. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, he can play knight E. Wait, no, he can't. And then I turned on my lightsaber and then shing shing across the body and he dropped and I took the piece. I couldn't believe he hung it, honestly. But that's what happens in time trouble. When you get in time trouble, things happen. It happens to the best of us here. Now, improvement on this game, play bishop D2 instead of uh, bishop B2. And um, another improvement will be maybe knight to B2. Uh, and play in, playing in this fashion, if I ever face this again, just to see, uh, you know, kind of how I would play it. You know, you want to learn from it there, guys. But I beat him. Grandmaster Mac Moner goes down to the Jedi himself. I was able to do it. I was able to do it. So 15 minutes, two second game. And it was I went 4-0 in that match. This last match, I went 3-1. and I was mad. I missed. I lost the last game in uh, time trouble myself. I actually just blundered in time trouble. But 7-1 and one so far in the... In the um, 2020 states cup guys again i'm going to leave a link to the 2020 states cup so you guys can check that out thanks so much for watching this video guys this was the scotch gambino check out all the videos in the playlist put comments on this video like it share it and all the other good stuff guys hopefully this helps you again i love sharing with you guys and i will see you on the next video